Okay, we're going to do revision on paragraph 3.6 next. So paragraph 3.6 is on changes in interest rate. In paragraph 3.5, we looked at um, the scenario where we have missed payments during the lifespan of a loan. Now we're going to look at the situation where during the lifespan of a loan, the interest rate changes. Um, in this case, there are two common scenarios. First of all, if the value, the value of the remaining payments can increase if the interest rate increases, or if the interest rate decreases, then the remaining payments will decrease. That's the first situation. The second situation is that we can increase or decrease the number of remaining payments. So if the interest rate increased, then the number of payments will also increase, or if the interest rate decreased, then the number of remaining payments will also decrease. We're not going to look at the second scenario where we change the number of payments. We're only going to look at the first scenario where we change the value of the remaining payments. Okay, so we're going to do that through example 43. Example 43 is similar to example 42. Um, in example 42, we looked at missed payments, but now we're going to look at a, a change in interest rate. So again, we have a loan of 10,000 rands at an interest rate of 18% per annum compounded monthly. We have equal 24 equal payments of 499 rands. Now, when the eighth payment is made, the interest rate increased from 18% per annum to 21% per annum. Uh, and we would like to know the value of the new equal payment from T9 to T24. Um, now, the first thing is, if the interest rate increase, then we expect that the remaining payments should be more than 499 Rand. So we no need to know what we expect the answer to be. So we have the interest rate up until T8 is then 18% per annum compounded monthly. And then from T8 to T24, it is 21% per annum compounded monthly. So how will we treat something like this? Okay, it's, what we will do is we will first of all find the outstanding balance at T8, the time period where the interest rate changes. So we make use of the retrospective method. Um, by now you are familiar with the retrospective method. So the balance at T8, we take the original loan size and we move it to T8. Okay, so this 0 0.015 is my 18% divided by 12. And we do that um, up until T8. And then we subtract from that the future value of all the payments that's been done up until T8. Okay, so 7,054 rands and 92 cents, that is the outstanding balance at TA. That's the first step. And now we will treat this outstanding balance as if it is the present value of a new loan that starts at T8. And we will use the new interest rate for this so-called new loan with a present value of 7,054 rands. 
Okay, so to find the new payments from T9 onwards, we will use the outstanding balance at T8 as the value of a new loan, and we will use the new interest rate of 21% for this new loan. So we want to get the payments, and we have the present value. Present value was the outstanding balance at TA that we calculated on the previous slide. Okay, and this 0 0.0175 is the new interest rate, 21% divided by 12. And we have 16 remaining payments. Uh, we start the first payment at T9. To get the 16, you take 24 minus 8. And that will give us the remaining um, number of payments. Okay, so to compensate for the change in the interest rate, equal regular payments of 509 rands and 36 cents must be made from T9 to T24. And this answer is in line with what we expected. The original payments were 499 rands, and we expected a slight increase in these payments because of the increase in the interest rate. Okay, so now you should be fine to attempt some exercises on your own. If you go to pages um, 93 and 94 at the back of your notes. They are exercises on sections 3.4 to 3.6. If you go to page 94, numbers 4 and 5 are exercises on missed payments and number 6 is an exercise on a change in interest rate. You should be able to do those exercises now on your own.